trends are an important issue in science. You want to know how certain data develop, what happened in between certain observation points and what happened beyond those points. So how do you handle trends? How do you deal with interpolation and extrapolation? What I'm going to show you now is basically focused on two tools that tell you how to use Excel in science. One is a CD that I developed and another one is a book. They both have the same contents but they do things in a different way. So some people may prefer the CD, some people may prefer the book. Um, we are going to do this in Excel, of course. I want you to know that if you have a later version than Excel 2007, the book and the CD will still allow you to do everything that is mentioned here. We are going to open Excel. And let's see, we have the following information. In the year 1000, we had a population of 310 million people. And in the year 2000, we had 6 billion people. And we would like to know what would the population size be in 2050. So let's make a chart first for the graph on this information. And if you want a chart on this, you do not have to highlight the total table. You just click anywhere in the table, unless you want parts of the table uh, plotted in a chart. Which chart do you choose? I would recommend that you do not use a line or a column chart. And you probably see why when you look at the horizontal axis, it takes every category as a category. So thousand years have the same distance as 25 years way to the right. So a line chart is not a good option. So I'm going to escape that option. In this case you definitely need an X, Y or a scatter chart. You have a choice. I'm going to choose the one that works with a, a smooth line between the data points. Deleting the label, the title, and you see that the population is growing almost exponentially. We would like to know what the population would be in the year 2050. I fixed the chart a little bit so it looks better. And I would like to focus on this kind of extrapolation. What would be the observation point in 2050. We aren't there yet, we haven't observed it yet, but we can extrapolate. It would be somewhere here. So we need somehow a tool that creates a straight line from the last two observation points on upwards. The function that does that is called trend in Excel. It's a very powerful function that allows you to do linear trend lines. If it's non-linear, we will discuss that in the CD and in the book, not in this video. It asks you what are the new axes that you want to predict. 2050. So what are the known axes? Always take the, the closest two observation points to your extrapolation point and find the corresponding population sizes. And as you can see already, it is 10 billion estimated, predicted, projected based on that function. This chart automatically adjusts. If it doesn't automatically adjust, like in this situation, all you have to do is click on that series of values and notice that in the left it highlights what part of the data sort is included. We are going to expand that data source by one row and there is our new observation point. Let's pretend we would like to do extrapolation for the year 2013. It is extrapolation 
from 1975 to 2000, it would be interpolation between 2000 and 2050. I'm not going to do interpolation because 2050 is already a guessed value. So I, I will still use interpolation, but you could have used extrapolation. And finally we want it to look like this. We need an insert here that shows us where those data points are. In order to create that insert we need three sets of coordinates. Zero on the x-axis and something like seven billion on the y-axis. Zero, seven billion. This point would be 2013, seven billion, and the last point would be 2013, zero on the y-axis. How do we get these values? We are going to interpolate. Let's say this is the year we want to f predict to project. You can type whatever you want in there. I typed 2013. I made a link to this cell. This cell has a link to A12. That cell has a link to A12. We know where the zeros come from, depending on where the origin of your y and x axis is. So now we have to find those two points. You probably feel it coming. That's a matter of using trend again. So we are going to use the trend function. We know now the tricks. What is the new x? 2013. The known x, that is a decision we have to make. I, as I told you, I would go for 1975 and 2000, not 2000 and 2050. But again, I would consider this safer and more logical. And the world population would be 7 billion something. To create the other coordinates, I'm just going to make a link to that cell, and these are the values we find. All we have to do now is insert them into the chart. How would we do that? We are going to talk to the chart and say there is one series of values there, but I, we would like to add another series of values based on these three sets of coordinates. We right click the background, select the data behind the graph. There is already one series of values, we are going to add another one. We don't give it a name, you could if you want to. And where are your x values? A15 through A17, your y values B15 through B17. And there is your insert. If that insert came out differently, that is just a matter of chart type. So if I would right click on that series of values, I could change the chart type for that series two. to, let's say, a scatter chart with rounded things. And you will see that that's what it's going to look like. So you have to make sure that it's not a smooth line. So I'm going to cancel what I was changing. And so we ended up with a very clear insert. One more issue. It is obvious that the number you type in A12 is changeable. If I want to find this for the year 2030, your insert will obviously adjust. And if I would do that for 2050, I should get the same results as we had gotten here. 10 billion, 140 million people. So we have a very flexible kind of insert. Where can you find all of this? Either in the CD or the book. It depends on what kind of learner you are. If you go for the CD, you get 1800 different slides that allow you to go at your own pace 
from topic to topic. You select the topic you want to from the schedule. Uh, it has also interactive questions like choose what the answer would be. So it is checking whether you got all the information straight. The book doesn't have that kind of course. So the book works differently. It has the same table of contents, but it works with, in each chapter at the end, a series of exercises. So you can test yourself, did I get what the book told me to do? So we have two choices. You take your pick. The content is the same. The first chapter is on general spreadsheet techniques that you may not be aware of. The second chapter is on data analysis. It also goes into the array formula issue. The array formulas are extremely powerful and you may not know about them. I always say if you know how to use them, the sky is the limit. Then it discusses how you can plot data like we just did in this video. It also includes histograms, error bars, interpolation, trend lines, etc. Then we, we go into curve fitting and regression analysis. It includes linear regression, non-linear kinds, how to choose which one is best, sigmoidal or logistic curves like you use for EC50 and IC50 determination. Uh, we will also find out how you, f how you can check whether the curve you came up with is the best one. We go into multiple regression when an independent factor is determined by several dependent factors and not just one, and correlations. And finally we have a important chapter on statistical analysis. How do you use the student's t-test? How do you use the chi-test that you may not know but you really should know? Analysis of variance, how do you test for significance? And how do you calculate the margins of error for your sample results? So here are the two. They have the same name. I wrote both of them. My last name is pronounced for Schuren. And you can find the CD or the book at MrExcel.com, MrAmazon.com and of course Barnes and Noble and any source you feel comfortable with. I wish you good luck with this video and with the CD or the book that you probably are going to use and need.